Welcome, uh, William Jewel fans, to Inside the Cardinal Playbook. It's my pleasure to be here with Coach Cruzy. Uh, Coach, we uh, had another conference ball game. Uh, you know, I to start this off, and I, I'm hoping this doesn't sound negative, but I really believe this, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, or tentatively wings, you can't turn the ball no. over. And you look at the first half, uh, and we did turn the ball over, mm -hmm. and we made some mistakes. Uh, I really thought we dominated the game. Uh, they had to block uh, field goal, and they returned yeah. it for the kickoff. They kind of changed Big the momentum. momentum. Yep. And we talk about switching momentum all the time in athletics. But mm -hmm. uh, overall, the second half, I was very pleased with it. The kids came off the deck and really played hard. You know, like we, we talk about all the time, you've got you to play four quarters in college football. And, and uh, we came out, and we were really flat. And and uh, really weren't very sharp in anything uh, for the first 30 minutes of the game. You know, we, we did some good things at time. We had some good individual play at time, but as a group, uh, it just wasn't the same group that, you know, just come off three conference, three big conference wins. And, and uh, we put ourselves behind the eight ball a little bit in the second half. And, you know, I, I was proud as heck of them, you know, coming back in the third quarter there to tie it up. And, you know, and then we, we did some things in the fourth quarter didn't necessarily help us either with turning the ball over and, and uh, some un uncharacteristic things, at least for us over the last three or four games. So those were things, those were mistakes and situations we didn't put ourselves in. And, and uh, you know, Saturday we didn't, didn't do enough, you know, early enough to uh, put ourselves in an opportunity to win. Well, you know, it's always the coach's fault, man. You know that. Yeah, it uh, is. Ned Yost is going through that right now in the World Series. I listened to some talk shows on the way up. But, uh, you know, I, I watched that ball game. This is not passing it on the kids or throwing the kids under the bus. You know, you're starting a quarterback. This is That was only his fourth start, yep. I believe. Uh, and when I was talking about in the ball game, and a lot of people, unless you have coached, really don't understand what I'm talking about. But not only do you make mistakes and turn the ball over, but sometimes you make the wrong reads. Right. And what I saw in this ball game a few times, that we had opportunities where not just a quarterback, mm -hmm. and I'm not just saying yeah. a quarterback, but I'm talking about several people, maybe even a receiver, and we're going to have Anthony Mullins on here in a second as far as reading the pattern right. or the situation. It's not always about ne necessarily turnovers, but also not making the right reads. Right, and, and you know, you kind of started out by saying you know, about the – coaching part of it and it you know I take full responsibility for this one because at the end of the day it's it's my responsibility to make sure we're prepared and focused to play and we had a lot of mistakes on Saturday that were un, un or lack of focus mistakes you know mistakes that we don't normally make in the, the routine plays that we make over and over and over again and have made over and over again all season and uh and it just is it wasn't one player in one phase no, of the game no. it was Offense, defense, special teams. That's we how you had, lose. We had missteps in those areas. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's on me for, uh, you know, not having, you know, us as focused as we needed to be. And, you know, we were in some uncharted waters with, you know, the situation we were in, winning what we winning the three game conference games in a row, being at the top of the conference, and we we need to handle that better. And that's my job to make sure we do that. And and uh, we had a really good meeting yesterday. And and uh, excited about getting rolling into practice today with a clean slate and and uh, knowing what we got to do to finish here to, to do the things we want to do. Well, that's that's what I want to go to a positive point. I don't want to be negative on all this because I you know you know I think the students here at William Joe College are, are great kids mm -hmm. and we're going to have a couple on here in a second. But uh, you know you guys never quit. No. And I think that's what you should build on yep. in this one because it could have been real easy. You know, uh, we talked about it uh, in order to change the, the direction of the program, the kids have got to understand that they have to go get it. Right. And uh, you know, I think we saw that in the second half. I, I really, I, really, I was discouraged because we didn't play very good the first yeah. half as your, as, we, yep. as your biggest fan. But I also was very encouraged, and I mean this, the second half, the way you guys came off the deck and played. Well, you know, the Truman, the Truman win – you know, give, gave us a lot of confidence and the ability to be able to come back and do that. You know, and at halftime, you know, there was a lot of things, you know, being said about, you know, our focus and some of that stuff. And, and but nobody had the panic look in their face, which, which is some things we've seen in the past. Nobody had the panic look in their face. Everybody knew that, hey, this was within our grasp and we had the ability to come back and get back in this game. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, you know, we, we didn't finish very well. But, uh, you know, the fight was there, the effort was there, and the want to was there. It's just hard when you start the way we started to refocus yourself for another 30 minutes and be able to, to uh, get yourself in that mindset. And uh, so it's one of those that uh, you learn from, you grow from, and, you know, the fortunate thing, if there is a fortunate thing ever about a loss is, 
that uh, even with this loss, you know, our, our conference destiny still lies within our hands. I mean, it's all things that we can control. Now we got to go win several games in a row here, but, uh, you know, that will that'll definitely be our focus. Well, you know, again, you, you look at the league, and I've been following them pretty closely, and anybody can beat anybody. Yep. That's the, way, the yeah. way I see it. I mean, the, even Andy, who's, you know, at the top of the heap right now, I've had a lot of close calls. Yep. Uh, so, you know, the ball bounces your way. But you're right about the turnovers and being consistent. Uh, but I think that's where you've grown, Coach, don't you? I, I think that these these young guys have figured out that, hey, listen, we're going to be in a ball game. Okay, we're down a little bit here. But, mm -hmm. you know, let's be consistent in what we do. Well, I think I think we have the confidence in all phases now to know that we can we can be dominant defensively and we have been at times mm -hmm. and offensively we can score at will and we have at times and special teams we can be really really good which we have at times and I think we're still searching for that as that that ever elusive perfect game mm -hmm. where you're where you execute uh, to the level of your expectations in all three phases and and I truly don't believe we've had that game this year if you look at our you look at even our wins you know those aren't games that that uh We've come out and been real clean in every phase, uh, some some cleaner than others, but we're still searching for that that elusive perfect game where where you're hitting on all cylinders, and uh, you hope you start to play that type of ball here over the next three three games down the stretch. Well, Cardinal fans, that ends this uh, segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Uh, we'll come back with a couple superstars uh, for the Williamsville Cardinals here in just a second. Cardinal fans, welcome to the second segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook, and it's my pleasure to be with the guy, Thomas Clanton, who's playing safety for us and has played as well as anybody I've seen. If he's not all league, I'll be disappointed. I really will. I really think he's been a difference maker, both on the pass and run. And, and uh, Thomas, what do you, you know, as a senior, how you feel back here? I, uh, I told you before we got on the air, I felt like the secondary is one of the biggest improvements on the team this year. Why don't you talk about that? Oh, what a start. We had a we had a lot of players actually step up for us this year in the secondary. Uh, me and my fellow Conrad, Quinlan Riser, are both seniors in the secondary. So uh, we kind of just like push all the younger or the younger freshmen and the younger classmen to like exceed and like let them know that it all comes down on us at the end of the day because our motto is they just don't throw that ball up, you know, without us making a play on it. So uh, we have a freshman back there as well, a redshirt freshman, Andrew right. Pence. Uh, he got an interception this past weekend. He's a he's a phenomenal player. We also had a a corner by the name of Leandre Nevitt step up for us this year. Really has making some impact plays for us. Uh, he's a great tackler, you know, great player as well when the ball's in the air. So basically, we just strive for excellence back there. Uh, anytime the ball's in the air, we just try to make a play on it. Your first game of the year, I've never seen so many guys come in and out of the secondary and have to play. You know, and that was really, we were all, you know, we beat Southwest Baptist, and all of us were like, you know, holding on for dear life just having the numbers. But what it gave us was depth, because I thought from that game on, everybody had the opportunity and felt comfortable in coming in the ball game. Did you feel the same way? Definitely, definitely. Like, we kind of got into a rhythm back there. So we've kind of just been rolling with that. You know, being safety is like being the quarterback to the defense uh, yeah, back there. Uh, why don't you tell people why you like playing safety? Well, uh, I kind of like it all coming down to me. Like, when it comes down to it, I feel like I have to make the play because I'm the last line of defense. I'm the furthest guy away from the ball. Therefore, uh, everything has to get past me in a sense. So I kind of like that sense of responsibility just being back there and uh, being able to let everybody else know what I see and being able to help them back there. Well, you know what's amazed me about you this year, though? You fill in the alley and putting funny bumps on them when they run the football. You've always been, I think, a good pass defender, and you get good angles when the ball's up in the air. But you've done a great job of filling the alley. Yeah. Well, you just got, decide you get mad yeah. at everybody when get, when kickoff starts and you just roll? I kind of just throw my head in there and uh, just try and make sure that the ball gets down. You know, I'm not worried about him. I'm trying to, you know, just make a play for our defense. You know, almost all, all the time now, every once in a while we'll see a different look. But everybody's running the spread offense, mm -hmm. you know. So we uh, it's almost repetitive what we're going to see from week in to week out. Mm -hmm. But you have to change according to personnel of the teams you're playing. Definitely. Now, if the word I get is McHenry's got a pretty good passing game. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, so what are you looking for this week? Well, uh, they got some uh, pretty good slot receivers, uh, a single receiver X side that we just have to be aware of and just keep everything in front of us at the end of the day because 
as long as we keep everything in front of us, you know, nothing gets behind us. Well, so just like every other time that I've ever interviewed anybody here at uh, William Jewell College, you're a class act and a fine young man. You're having a great year. Uh, hope you continue it. Uh, how do you feel closing real quick in about 30 seconds today? you got a shot to win the conference championship. Uh, what's your viewpoint as one of the captains on the defense? My view is we take it one game at a time. Uh, I know we're definitely capable of, of accomplishing our goal that we set out at the beginning of the season. And being this close, it's time for us to rise to the occasion. And simple as that. And I feel like we'll do that. Well spoken, Congressman. That's Thank what you. I thought. <laughs> Thomas, great job. Good job all year long. I mean that. You really Thank played you. well. And good luck the last three. Let's finish strong. Appreciate it. That ends this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Welcome to this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook, and it's my pleasure to be with Anthony Mullins, who's number two in total yardage offensively in the league in the GLVC, which is magnificent. Of course, I'm going to tune you up here, and everybody calls you the Ant. Well, you fly around there. How'd you come up with that name? I don't know. I think it's just short for my name. Uh, Thomas Cook always jokes around and calls me. Ant. So Thomas is the one that calls you the Ant. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, okay. Sir. Yes, well, you might tell him that you're right there with him as far as total <laughs> oh, yeah. yardage. Oh, yeah. The thing that it's amazed me, you're a great receiver, but let me start on specialty team. How do you like returning kicks? Um, returning kicks is fun, especially when you got guys up front that are blocking for you, you know, making it easy for you to choose lanes to run through and you know, I just try to do my best on special teams. Now did you return kicks in high school? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is not like the first time no, no, first sir. rodeo for you. Now at the receiver position, uh, <clears throat> You've done a great job, and you've did really made some tough catches on deep balls. Uh, Nick West throws a pretty good deep ball. Yeah. There's no question about it. And, you know, he's like everybody else. He's only had four starts so far in college. But, mm -hmm. you know, he, he showed some real promise in a lot of situations. One of the reasons why he's getting the ball to you. Uh, but why don't you talk about some of the other receivers on, on the squad because I think our passing game has really, really been improved this year. Yeah, um, I feel like when it comes down to it, you can depend on our – uh, we got Nate, who's a captain on our receiving core. You know, we can depend on him. Uh, Quinn Riser, he made some big plays uh, Saturday, um, converting first downs. Um, Staten, he's also dependable. Uh, you got freshman Demarcus, who also plays running back. You know, he's versatile in the offensive game. So, yeah, you know, I'm waiting for you to get back there to run the football, too, you know, like on the jet sweep or something like that. I mean, I think you're very capable to do that. Yeah, you've got the great hips and the great movement and stuff. Let me ask you this as a receiver. You like going over the middle? I don't think it really bothers me going over the middle. You know, I take a few hits a game, so it doesn't really bother me. Well, the thing about you, uh, you know, you nobody really gets a hit on you. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? It's just God-given ability, or do you – you, you, do you feel it when somebody's about ready to put funny bumps on you? or uh, Why don't you explain that to the uh, to the fans a little bit? I think it's kind of an innate sense of, like, where the spacing on the field, mm -hmm. you know. But it also comes with watching film, you know, reading defenses, knowing where the safeties are, where the linebackers are. Well, I really see that when you're running back kickoffs because mm -hmm. you got that shiftiness to you. That's why I wouldn't be surprised someday we may not see you on a jet sweep or two. Uh, you know, looking in and uh, finish this a little bit, uh, we're getting ready to play McHenry. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, defensively, what are you looking at as a receiver against McHenry? Well, most of the time they rush three and drop eight, so we have to be able to run the ball first and foremost and, you know, just find open zones to pass it. So you were talking about open zones, you know, uh, we see all, because we're basically a spread team too, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you see various coverages. I know we're running various coverages. We run cover two and what I call cover four man under, and then, mm -hmm. you know, one uh, uh, cover five uh, free safety man under, you know, those kind of things. Yes, uh, what what defense as far as in secondary, just for your own, what do you like to play against the most? Oh, you zone or man? Man, man. You know, I feel like, you know, it's personal to me to go against someone in man coverage because I feel like no one can can stop me. And that's just how I feel going into each game. Well, here's what I've really noticed. Uh, you're not the biggest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. You might be one of the quickest, but you're not the biggest guy. When they go press coverage against you, you get off that no matter who the corner is and what size the corner is. I've been watching that all year. Uh, what's your trick? Um, I try to leverage them, you know. Why don't you make... explain that because when you say that, a lot of the fans won't know what you're talking about. Well, you know, What's leveraging me? A DB is he's basically going off your reaction, and you can either give him a two-way go or a three-way go, and that's to uh, fake him 
make it seem like you're going one way and actually going right. the opposite way. Yeah, you've done a great job with that. You know, you have a great year and you just you know stay healthy and can continue to do that. Good luck this weekend, play McHenry. Kind of come off the deck after that loss with Quincy, but uh, coach brought up a good point. Mm -hmm. You guys control your own destiny. Yes, sir. So that's always good this time of year. We're finishing it up, and you got the opportunity to do that. So good luck to you and your comrades. Tell the rest of the receivers good luck, Cardinal fans. Hopefully, again uh, that finishes this uh, segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Cardinal fans, welcome back to the last segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And, Coach, we go to McHenry uh, this uh, weekend, which is a big conference game. Of course, for the next three, is all big conference yeah. games. But we go over there. They're playing better. Oh, boy, they're, they're a scary team now. You look at their overall record, I think they're 2-6. and six, But they've won their last two. And, and, you know, early on in the season, that was the scores. I looked at the scores on Sundays, and that, those were one that were puzzling to me when I kept seeing them lose because I know what type of players they have. Uh, in a lot of different positions on, on in every phase of the game. They've got some returners that make it difficult on you. Quarterback's a good player. They've got some receivers that are good up front on the offensive line. Their defensive line, they've got some guys that just come at you. And, uh, and they've got some guys on the other, other guys on the defensive side that make it tough on you. So they've kind of hit their stride here the last couple of weeks, and they've you know, won two in a row here in conference, and they're starting to roll a little bit. So, you know, never fails for us. We always hit the hit them when they're hot. ones when they're hot. And... Uh, you know, but hey, you, you always want to beat teams when they're at their best. So it'll be a challenge for us this weekend to, uh, you know, to have a great week of practice first of, of all this week and then uh, be ready to go, you know, when we head over there on on Saturday. But you guys play well on the road. Now tell me, you know, I have a lot of people come up to yeah. me because I've met a yeah. lot of the parents now. So yeah. they always, and they say, Coach, why do we play so well on the road? Yeah. Can you give an answer to that on the show? You know, I, I think we enjoy being on the road, to be honest with you. We get away and we're, our minds are clear and our minds are fresh and our bodies are fresh and, you know, all the things that we, as a coach, you love it. And you probably were this way too because you can control the environment. Right. You know, I, I can't control dorm rooms and I can't control girlfriends and some Surely of those other things when we're at home but when we're on the road you know we're extremely focused and our guys do a tremendous job of making taking the business type approach but but being relaxed as well and and uh you know and i think it's for whatever reason that's kind of been our mo but we've you know we won i think we're two and two at home this year something like that too and and uh so we've got a maybe two and three something like that but you know we got to find those ways to win at home as well well, Cardinal fans, hopefully yeah, you all make the trip over to McHenry, 1 o'clock start on Saturday. If you can, make sure you listen to Rick and myself. And, uh, again, uh, Coach, good luck to you and the squad. Thank you know you. it's a big conference game. You guys are in the thick of it. It's been a yep. fun year. We might as well finish strong. Just keep rolling. That's this uh, segment of this week's Inside the Cardinal Playbook.